Hi, everyone. Today I'm going to lead us through um, a follow along longevity class. And longevity is just about enhancing the quality of your life. So it's not age specific, but you will probably resonate and benefit a lot from it if you're in your 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s plus. Um, and this will be done together. So please join me. Um, you can do this in your living room at home and you don't really need any equipment or prior experience, except that you will need to get a soft object, for example, a sock or a handkerchief, uh, a t-shirt, just a, a piece of soft material. So that's the only thing you'll need initially. And what we'll do is go through um, body parts and joints that are particularly important to enhance our awareness and abilities and health through them so that we can move gracefully and uh, enjoy daily life without, not just without pain, but have more freedom and enjoy that. And um, we'll wrap up with a more organic, integrated, simple game and rhythmicality. So the first area I want to bring attention to are the feet. The feet are what support us in life. So we stand on them, we walk with them. They are our base of support. So it's very important that we keep them healthy and strong and mobile and nimble and adaptable. They will prevent us from falling over and getting injured and move us again gracefully through life. You can see them as the base of a building and the rest of your body as um, an architecture that moves in three-dimensional space. So you want that base to be pretty sound and to feel good on that base. So the first thing we'll do is develop a bit of strength and sensitivity and articulation. So with the soft object, I've just chosen my ankle socks. I'm just going to spread the toes over them, grip, pick them up, and put them down. And I just alternate from foot to foot. If you struggle to balance, feel free to support yourself against a stable surface like a wall or a heavy table. And as you grip, try to involve all the toes as evenly as possible. So you may notice some toes are gripping more than others. There may even be some mild crampy sensations in the sole of the foot or the toes. All of that is okay. Just have some patience and enjoy this. You can also move the object around. For example, do a circle. or just moving it side to side and up and down, however you like, building that basic grip strength. And then another exercise we'll do will be more articulation, less strength involved, but building those neural pathways or enhancing them from the brain through the limbs down to the toes. So just like we do this with our fingers, we have a bit better uh, abilities and articulation. We can do the same with the toes. So we're going to lift the toes up and try to place one toe down at a time, starting with the pinky, ring, middle, index, big toe. And same thing, we alternate from foot to foot. If in the beginning it's just one big chunk, that's okay, your best friend is your imagination, followed by repetitive, consistent effort, taking action on it. And if this is easy for you, enjoy it. Use it to lubricate the joints, feel good in the feet. And just like learning any skill, it will become familiar and comfortable and the quality goes up. And the final foot exercise I'll have us do together 
will be just rooting and kind of having this internal massage on the foot and ankle. So rest your hands gently on your hips. Shift the weight slightly to one side, keeping this leg soft and springy. And draw a circle around the ball of your foot. The ball of your foot is this part here. And just enjoy standing nice and tall and relaxed and see if you start to go all over the place or if you're able to maintain a nice uh, solid posture. And we'll do both directions. Feel how that's affecting your foot, ankle, knee, hip, how it echoes up your skeleton. So you're practicing with awareness and we'll change side. So while we are focusing on the feet, everything is connected. There is no isolation. And here you can feel how it's affecting the structures on top. And we change direction again. So as we focus on the health of our feet, the benefits come upstream as well. It's a small investment for a big return. Next up, we'll move up to the knees. The knees are one of the most common areas, uh, problematic areas for people, young and old. Um, they're very closely connected to the emotion, fear. And it's one of the earliest parts we feel uh, problems or pain in. They are caught between the foot, the ankle, and the hip. So if something is not flowing nicely with the hip or the feet, they eat it up. And we need to address each section because they all work together. But also build confidence and trust that our knees can be youthful and athletic and springy and, and make us feel confident traveling through the world on these strong legs that we're building. So first, keep your knees together and rest your hands on the knees and gently glide to one side as far as you can, provided there's no pain. So if you need to shrink the range of this movement, feel free to do that. And try not to let your knees start to sh shift and shuffle one in front of the other. Allow the hips and head to counterbalance and keep the feet rooted on the floor. So you're getting these lateral pressures in the knee to build resiliency, not to hurt yourself. Next up, you will still have your feet together as we did before and feel your Achilles tendon, which is a very, very strong band, an elastic band right at the bottom behind the leg. So we're going to sit, driving our knees forward and down until we feel a stretch in the Achilles. And then when you need, you allow the heels to lift up and then you just bring it back down. So you're not passively dropping into this. Your heels are actively driving towards the floor as they lift up. We'll do two more here. Great. For all of these movements, if you need to decrease the range or if you want to increase it, if you need to work slower for your own abilities or you feel like doing more reps, adjust it according to your own ability but give your best. Next up, we'll have again the feet together. The hands gently press into the knees as the knees press gently into the hands. And we're going to glide to the side, come forward, glide to the other side and come up. So again, if there's a lot of weakness or any pain, shrink the size 
of this movement. The priority that is that it is a smooth movement. Smoothness will bring all the other qualities. And observe how as I do this knee washing exercise, how my upper body interacts, these small orbits that happen, the most obvious one being in the head. We'll change direction, but I'll show a side view so you have more perspective. So same circle, opposite direction. So you have the lateral glide. The heels are still driving towards the floor. So you keep active and you want more weight towards the back of the body rather in the front, in the knees. We'll do two more here. It is also very important that you keep your legs together so your inner thigh is active, meaning that the center of your legs and body are actively squeezing together and not falling apart. We want a strong um, inner connection in the body. Next up, we'll move. We went feet and ankles, knees will be hips. Hips are extremely important as well. Um, you can see them a bit like a well that nourishes the rest of the body. So you cannot have healthy knees if your hips are not healthy. And you also can't really have a healthy spine if the hips are not healthy. So we have to look after them and have them really uh, open and strong and adaptable and again, they, the legs are what carry us through life. So you could get away with having a slightly weaker upper body, but you need this to, to carry you. So very simply, we will just start with um, hip circles that most human beings would have done, even in PE class back at school. Keep your feet rooted. And don't let your head drop everywhere so you're not doing a head circle. You do this tiny orbit above in opposition to the hips. So the simple movements are practiced with as much awareness and intention as more complex movements. We'll do the other direction. Because it is when we go, when we move and practice unconsciously that we hurt ourselves. We're capable of doing very complex, very intense things as human beings. And if we do them with awareness, then it's generally okay. It's when we kind of become mentally lazy or sleepy that other issues come up. So here we moved in the transverse plane. You don't need to worry too much about technicalities, although you can look them up if you like. Next, we will move in the frontal plane. So if you imagine your hip like the train of a wheel, it is just moving in this motion. So if it's available to you, go up on your toes. If not, just lengthen upwards with your imagination. Then we're going to scoop the tail forward as we bring it forward, sit straight down back towards the heels and sit back and up. If you need, you can also free up the hands for this. And if it's easy, you can increase the size. If it's challenging, make it smaller. But try to draw a circle and keep it smooth. I'll do a couple more with you, showing from the side view as well, so you have a clearer idea. This is the sagittal plane. And then we will reverse the direction. So transverse plane is this way. Sag sagittal plane, you can think of uh, Sagittarius shooting bow and arrow, so it's straight ahead. 
So as we reverse it, we're going to go back, down, forward, up. And as you do this, the attention is on the hips, but feel how that's affecting your feet, ankles, knees, hips, and lower back especially. Let's do one more here. Great, and final one will be frontal plane. So it's in front as if you're uh, washing a window or a screen in front of you, and it will be the same with the hips. So from here, we'll grow tall again, We'll side flex to really lean to one side, sending the hips as far as possible. We'll come down and scoop under, a bit like a pirate ship motion, to the other side, opening this side now, making that the furthest point, before we grow up, grow tall again. And again, as smooth a motion as you can. I will also show the side view as we change direction in a moment so that you can see that the hip stays more or less at a similar angle while it's traveling in this plane. So it does not go backwards and forwards much. It's only traveling in this plane, which is the frontal plane. So from here, backwards means this and forwards here. Yeah, anterior posterior tilt. We're just staying neutral and moving on the frontal plane as much as is available right now. So you may need to shrink the size of the circle if it's very challenging. We'll do a couple more in this direction. If any of these movements are new and challenging, you may end up holding your breath. So try to also pay attention to what's happening to your breath, at least in the background. Nice. And the last part for the hip, which involves the whole leg, will be, again, if it's available to you, have the hands on your hips and rest on one leg, but if needed, you can support yourself on a, a wall or stable surface. We're going to externally rotate, which means point the toes as far out as possible, and then internally rotate, pointing the toes in as far as possible. Try not to let your hip hitch up and down, and just see how that feels inside your hip socket. Again, as we move the bones and joints, we allow them to become lubricated, blood and synovial fluid can nourish that area. And then we'll change side. And you can observe if there's differences between the two sides. There's no need to judge or label or panic if there's a big difference. Just register that information. And perhaps as you do this um, practice again in your own time, you can spend a bit more time on the side that's a bit stiffer or weaker. One more each way. Great. So we've done feet, knees, hips. We travel up to the rib cage. A lot of us in modern um, society don't actually move our rib cage that much. And for some people, even the hips, especially in a, a Western culture. So 
We want to encourage this um, awareness and ability to move the rib cage in space. That way we can bring softness in our upper body and in our spines and more adaptability. So we're less stiff and rigid and always in this neutral spine position that really blocks us from many things. So and welcome a really soft, warm, nourishing quality. So I'll stand from the side so it's easier to see. Just glide your rib cage as far forward as you can, leaving your hips and legs in place. And then hollow, creating a little cave in your chest, opening the back of your shoulders as you lean back. So you're just going to glide forward and back. I'll continue a few more with you facing, facing you again. You may feel a small shift of your weight going towards the front of the foot as you lean forward and back towards the heels as you hollow away backwards. Try at this stage as much as you can to move your rib cage and not your hips back and forward. So they stay in place and you arch forward and round backwards. And then keeping the same trapped position with the hips, glide side to side. So your lower body is stuck or you stick the lower body and you glide side to side. If this is difficult, imagine you're like sitting on a chair and you're reaching to grab something really far from you on either side. So you feel this nice lateral motion in the spine and in your rib cage. There may be tiny shifts in the legs, but try to keep them grounded and not send all your weight on one side. Great. And then we'll do a simple circle. So we're just going to roll the rib cage above the belly button. So earlier as we did the forward backwards gliding, we were on the sagittal plane. As we did the side to side gliding, we were on the frontal plane. And now as we rotate in a circular motion, this way, it's the transverse plane. Let's reverse the direction of the circle. And really feel how your vertebrae are getting some movement, space, blood flow. Great. Finally, we'll move on to the head, the top of the body. So we'll start off with what is a bit more familiar, a full head circle, but you have the same awareness and care as you did for all the other movements that we did earlier. Try to make it smooth and large or as large as is pain-free. Keep the shoulders soft and relaxed and we'll change direction. So for this exercise, we're keeping the body quite still and only moving the top of the spine. We continue with this. We did a bit of transverse plane. We'll now glide forward and back in the sagittal plane. So as I go forward, I really stick my chin as far forward as I can. And then as I go backwards, I don't lean back with the body that stays more or less aligned. 
I send my chin back into my own neck, creating, if possible, a triple chin, not just a double chin. And I smoothly glide between the two. Try not to lift and lower your chin as you do this, which could mean going up and down or down and up, but stay level as if your head is sliding on a flat plate. From the side, it will look a bit like this. And you will see that as I move away from this forward posture, which is more of a computer screen watching posture, I get to open up the back of my neck, something that a lot of people miss out on these days. The next one will be a bit tougher uh, for most people, not everyone, but it will be a side to side glide and it looks like this. So it's hard because we usually want to move our shoulders and the rest of the body as we glide the head side to side. So if that is not possible for now, just rest your, make like a small gun shaped shape with your hands rest your thumbs on your upper chest and place the index fingers close to you, not in front, just parallel to your jaw. And this will actually be easier done in front of a mirror if you can see yourself. So if you need to look at a window or a mirror, any reflection, you can use that because it will show you the same angle of your face, which is what should be facing forward. So once I change angle, I've changed the exercise. I don't want to be turning and I don't want to be tilting. So I'm just gliding side to side. And then as we did with the foot and hip, now I want to show with the head how it integrates into everything else, including the eyes which guide um, for most of us, our perception of the world. So from here, you'll just rest the hands on the hips. And the previous drills we did for the head, we kept the body still and moved the head. Now the head will move the whole body and give a nice little washing sensation to the spine. So as we rest the hands on our hips, we take one hand and look at the palm and from here, allow your whole body to move as one system, as one animal. We're not segmenting so much anymore. So as I look at the palm, the legs allow me this whole movement and the spine is free to move as well. So from here, I will do a big circle around my head and place the hand on my hip. And I check the other palm. I will at some point see the back of my palm before I see the front again. And we'll just do a few more here. Again, you can increase or decrease the size of the movement to suit your own ability today. We'll just do one more on each side. And finally, we'll have two little, um, little games you can play by yourself to continue working on your movement qualities, improving your physicality. And um, the first one will be a very organic kind of mobility. So if you have a full squat, a resting squat, then go into this. If you do not have one, first consider working towards one, just a few minutes a day, spend some time here, even if you need to lift your heels up or hold onto a stable, heavy object, like the leg of a table, um, because the squat's very important for your ankles, knees, hips, lower back, digestive system. It's a very primal position that a lot of modern people have lost. 
So if you have a squat, pop into one now. If you don't have a full squat, then feel free to assist yourself in a high squat with your hands and just go, don't go as deep. So from here, if you're in a high squat, you will place the same object we did the warm up with. You'll use it again. I've now turned two socks into one sock. Place it as far as you can. Come back to center and see how much you can twist and rotate the body, keeping the heels down and bring it back. The same game is in the full squat. Place it as far as possible and bring it back. We're using very um, usable mobility so that your body retains it. You can see this as perhaps picking a certain fruit up in the garden over a small hedge. So the brain recognizes that it's a movement it is likely to benefit from retaining. And each time I see if I can get just a one or two millimeters further. And again, if you're struggling with the squat, you will just work with a high squat. So just do one more on each side. And in this last part of this video, we'll do something a bit rhythmical. So if you have some music with a, an easy beat that you can follow, that will be great. And um, you don't need this fancy equipment, but you will definitely find it much easier to work with lines on the floor. So what you can do for today, just bounce around with me. Don't worry about specific points on the floor. But as you repeat this, this session, what you can do is either get a small piece of chalk and draw across on the floor or masking tape. So stuff that will come off easily. Or here I've just taken two strings. You can use laundry line and you make a cross as a reference point. So if we have some music, it will be easier and keep you accountable to try and follow a beat as rhythm is very important. It means we have to follow something that's not our uh, own decision and adapt to it or stay with it. So I will start with the feet on either side of uh, this cross and I will never have two feet in the same box. So initially I just learned to step. I'm parallel and then I am in this uh, staggered stance. I won't share too many details so that you can use your eyes and learn the steps. of it. You can try to go a bit faster. If you have some bounciness, that is very beneficial for you. Not only does it stretch and strengthen the Achilles and retain this youthfulness in the feet and joints, but bouncing also increases your bone density, something that all of us also very much need. So if you are still able to bounce and jump, the next stage will be to add that. If that's too much, start with this and invite a feeling of bounciness in the body. With the full bounce, it will look like this. Also a little bit of cardio without going again to sleep. 
So if you go on a treadmill and watch a TV show, you'll go to sleep and you'll grind your joints away. Here, you're a bit more accountable and forced to stay present. Great. So the point of having markings on the floor is also to make you more precise and agile and careful. It adds to the challenge. So this is um, wrapping up the session. And now that the heart rate's gone up a little bit, quite likely the mood has also gone up a little. And we just want to calm it down and cool down. So just stand softly with your toes facing forward, soft knees, nice loose hips, relaxed spine. Place your hands on your lower abdomen. So my belly button's just here, and I cradle below the belly button. Just close your eyes for a second, or for a minute or two, and register the sensations on your skin, temperature, texture, how your breath is happening right now, and how your heart is beating. And now see if you can start to lengthen each breath. But as you inhale, you try to fill up your hands. So you inhale into the lower belly, filling up like a balloon. And as you exhale, you relax, allowing air to come out. And as at the end of the exhale, just gently push it out with your abdominal muscles, just that last little section. So in your own pace, you try and lengthen and maximize the inhale. Belly breathing encourages relaxation. So we're moving away from upper chest breathing and into lower belly breathing as we calm the system. And just take two more breaths into the lower abdomen, no rush. And just rest your arms down when you've finished. Open the eyes. And you should be all set for the day or evening. So that's it for this um, follow along longevity class. And I hope you've enjoyed it. And feel free to, to do it the session again and share it with your friends. Thank you.